Hey there, marketing researchers and Excel users. In this video, we're going to talk about a common bivariate statistical test used in marketing research, specifically the paired samples t-test. So in this example, we have to remember that there's two questions in our survey that deal with someone's preference for craft beer relative to other alcoholic beverages. Specifically, the situations are in a bar or in a sit-down restaurant. We would like to find out if on average, there's a difference between someone's preference for craft beer at a bar versus craft beer at a sit-down restaurant. Let's determine the right statistical test to use using the flow chart that we've been using earlier. First, our situation's a little different here. In this setup, everybody in our sample is someone that we might want to analyze. We're not grouping into separate groups, but rather, we want to take one group of individuals and compare how they answered to two similar questions. Therefore, we select the row one independent variable with two levels with a dependent or matched group, indicating that the questions are what's matched, but the individuals are dependent together. They belong as part of both the groups. Since we're using a five point scale and we're going to exclude those individuals who didn't give an answer, we're going to assume that we're dealing with interval level data, meaning we can calculate an average on each one of these five point scales. Not shown here, but we'll assume that the data distribution of each one of the variables is very roughly normally distributed. By following this flow logic here, it tells us that we should use the paired t-test. Let's formalize our hypotheses. So now we have just one merged group of individuals, but there's two different questions on our survey each measured on the same scale, but on a different topic. Our initial hypothesis is that the average craft beer preference intensity is equal for both the restaurant and bar scenarios. However, however, we need to more properly articulate our null and alternative hypothesis and cover all scenarios. That was the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is that the average craft beer preference intensity is different for restaurant and bar scenarios. It's the more formal stating of our hypotheses. And as we're getting used to seeing, in applied marketing research contexts, people tend to take a more informal approach when articulating their hypothesis. The data analysis tool pack is what we're going to use to conduct the t-test. It's a paired two sample for means test. Paired meaning the respondents are both in both of the groups, meaning they answer the same questions. And as with previous, we'll calculate uh, a, a statistic here, this time the T statistic, and we'll evaluate that resulting statistic against our criteria for level of confidence, whatever corresponds to the 95% level of confidence. And we'll see if we are willing to claim there is a statistically significant difference between preference for these two questions or not. Now to prepare this data in Excel for the test, there's definitely one thing we're going to do here. Some individuals didn't answer one or both of these questions. Or more specifically, they said they wouldn't in this situation or it doesn't apply to them. For our analysis, we have elected that if someone did not provide an answer to both questions or just one of them, we don't want to include them in our analysis. We want to know the craft beer versus al other alcoholic beverages preferences for those individuals who do have a preference in both of these scenarios. A lot of different ways to exclude these individuals from our analysis and our setup, I'm going to do something a little different here to illustrate the use of an if statement with a sum function attached to it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create an if statement that sums up the two columns for each row, and it says that if the summation of the two of them is greater than negative five, it's a valid record, meaning we do want to include it in our analysis, Otherwise, it'll provide a label to us to not analyze it. Now, why is this going to work? Well, remember, if any person answered, I don't, I wouldn't drink or the situation doesn't apply to me, either one or both of these columns will have a negative 999. Nine, nine. So if we sum up the values of these two columns, anything that's less than negative five, those are records we don't want to analyze. So this will create a little flag for us in another column that we'll then use to sort our data set. There's a variety of other ways to do this, but let's illustrate this application in Excel next.
Now that I've created a new column that clearly flags whether or not I want to analyze a particular record, I need to then sort and organize my data set so that all of the rows that I do want to analyze are all grouped together. Again, we'll simply use the uh, sort and filter option in Excel to sort the new analyze column we've created from A to Z, which will put all the valid to analyze records together, which will make it easy for us to select those ranges when we conduct our analysis. Let's go do that in Excel. Now that I'm finally ready to actually conduct my test, I select my variable 1 and variable 2 range. These correspond to the opinions about the restaurant and bar settings. Notice when I do my selection, I need to make sure that I exclude those individuals who are not valid for my analysis. So I won't include all 230 records. Luckily for me, they're nicely organized already. My hypothesized mean difference is my null hypothesis, so 0. My alpha set to 0.05, meaning 95% confidence and we'll put our results in a new worksheet. Let's go ahead and set up and run this analysis and then interpret it. Here's the results we'll get after we run the test. I have organized the results with a little bit of red labeling here to make it easier to see. At a baseline comparison, we see that both situations led respondents in our survey to increase their preference for craft beer since these numbers are positive. A positive score of two or one indicated higher levels of preference for craft beer over other alcoholic beverages. But we also see that the preference for craft beer was greater in a bar than in a restaurant. In fact, a difference of Point four units. This does seem like a rather large difference considering the range of our scale was only four points, right? So let's actually interpret the statistical test. Our T statistic is 4.609. Now since we have a large sample, rather than looking at this as a T statistic, we can actually interpret this as a Z value. Since this absolute value of 4.609 is greater than 1.96, our confidence level, we can reject the null hypothesis. And there is indeed a statistically significant difference between these two groups. We do believe people have a greater preference for craft beer at a bar than they'd have for craft beer at a restaurant. We could also use the p-value approach here, where the p-value is clearly less than 0.05 to come to the same conclusion that we would reject the null hypothesis. Now, how would we write up these results? A more comprehensive write-up might look like this. Overall, respondents expressed a greater preference for craft beer over other alcohol when they were at either a bar, mean score of 1.14 on a negative 2 to positive 2 scale, where a score of 0 meant no preference one way or the other, or a restaurant, mean score 0.74. The greater preference observed in the case of being at a bar was indeed statistically significant, p less than 0.05. Thus, we conclude that among our study population, there's an even greater preference for craft beer when at a bar rather than at a restaurant. This test was performed only among individuals who expressed a preference on both questions, which was 98.2% of the survey respondents. A lot of decisions I made when writing up these particular results. I wanted to make sure my reader had an, uh, some understanding of how to interpret these mean scores of like 1.14 and 0.74. So I emphasize how the scale worked. It was coded from negative 2 to positive 2, right? So they know these positive scores obviously correspond to higher preference for craft beer based on how I'm interpreting the results here. Rather than reporting the Z value, I inst elected instead to express my P as less than 0.05, which is another way of articulating 95% confidence level in my results. 
And finally, I elected to note that I didn't analyze all 100% of my sample. I excluded a small number of individuals who didn't express a preference on one or more questions. It was 98.2% of my survey respondents, so it wasn't a significant uh, drop-off. But I do note it here, as the reader might be concerned that some individuals didn't express a preference here. Now, a common issue that people get stuck on is when to use the paired sample t-test uh, versus other types of tests. First of all, the paired samples t-test has a couple other names. You might see the repeated measures t-test used, for example. In marketing research, there's two specific situations that you're likely to want to use the paired samples t-test. First, like the one that we just did here, you have two different survey questions that you presented to your respondents, and they had the same response scale. And you'd like to see if the average score is different between these two survey questions. Now, another scenario, which is different and not shown in this video, is when you ask the same exact survey question at two different time points to the same set of respondents. An example of this might be if you asked 100 people to rate their satisfaction with your company on day one, and then on day 30, those same exact 100 people rated their satisfaction level with your company. That's what I mean by same, same individuals and same question, but at two different points of time. So in this video, we looked at a research question and identified the proper statistical test to use given the setup of our question and our data in our code book. We identified the use of the paired samples t-test was appropriate. We then set up the paired samples t-test in Excel, adjusting our data set so that it was ready to accept the analysis. We then performed that analysis. We then interpreted that analysis. We then reported upon that analysis. And that's it.